him. I want to watch the news. Are you making are you making headway at least? This is the news. Smack him a gob, it's time for the only news that matters. Bruce Dickinson shares his thoughts on the first two Iron Maiden albums, 1980's Iron Maiden and 1981's Killers, both released before he joined the band and featuring Paul Diano. Uh, Bruce, Bruce, uh, Bruce's first studio album appearance was in 1982's Number of the Beast, and it was the album that really launched the band properly on the world stage. You know, that's bullshit. The first two albums were very good, very successful. Killers in particular is a favorite of mine, he says. The sound of that album really was the sound that should have been on the first Iron Maiden album. In fact, Martin Birch, who produced Killer, the Killers album, Steve Harris wanted to use him for the first album, but they didn't approach him because they thought he wouldn't be interested. Steve has always regretted the production on the first album. It's not up to the quality of Killers. Ironically, people thought Iron Maiden was a bit of a punk band because the debut album sounded like shit. When Killers came out, people thought Iron Maiden had come across all smooth and refined. We were never supposed to be a punk band. Steve hated punk. I didn't hate punk, but at the same time, it never did a great deal for me. I always thought it was strictly limited by their alleged lack of music ambition. All right, there you go. Uh, I was sent this link. Though I do remember reading the story years ago how Bruce said the first album sounded like shit. I forgot about it because really, I don't care. You know, it is his, imp it's a, uh, you know, Bruce Dickinson I treat with like anybody else on this planet. It's their, it's their opinion. Me personally, I think it's the greatest Iron Maiden album. I love that album. Then I would say Killers. I'm more of a Deano guy. I'm not that much of a Dickinson guy, but I'm not going to let that, you know, like taint my uh, my opinion on the guy because he thinks the first album sounds like shit. That's how he feels. That's how Steve Harris feels. You know, they, uh, and, and I'm sure a lot of you listening right now feel that same way. That's cool. That's your opinion. Me, my opinion. I love the sound of that first Iron Maiden album. I got absolutely no problem with it. I love the chainsaw effect during Ryan running free in the middle section. How that guitar sound. I mean, I just love everything about that first Iron Maiden album. I bought it in 1980 just by the strength of the album cover. I walked into a record store. I saw that album cover, flipped it around. They looked like Judas Priest to me. I said, I am leaving the store with this album. I remember I went to buy something else and ended up buying that and not even knowing what the, so uh, the, the music sounded like. And then I took it home and I put the needle on it and Prowler came on. And it just changed my life. That whole album, man. Remember Tomorrow, Running Free, Phantom of the Opera, Transylvania, Another World Sanctuary on the American pressing, Charlotte the Harlot, Iron Maiden, Forget it. That album, to me, is one of the greatest uh, debuts of all time. And, you know, 1980 is my favorite year of metal, of music. And I would probably, I you know, I, I didn't think about it till now, but I would probably put the first Iron Maiden above every album that came out in 1980. Although I, got, I do have to think about it. I mean, I put it above British Steel. I put it above Heaven and Hell. I put it above Strong Arm of the Law and uh, Wheels of Steel. Uh, uh, there's a di um, Def Leppard on through the night. So many killer albums came out in 1980. Back in Black, you know. I still put that first, uh, the first Maiden album above all those. Maybe there's another one that came out in 1980. I'm not thinking about now, but all those killer albums I just named right now, I put the first Iron Maiden above it. And I don't have a problem at all with the sound of Killers and all that Martin Birch did, because Martin Birch was a badass. And if Martin Birch would have done the first Maiden album, I don't think it would have that appeal that it has now with this production, because 
you know, those songs are raw. I mean, yes, I know they're raw and killers as well, but there's something about that production. Well, let me put it this way. If that, if that, that production on the first time would be on killers, oh, I'd be happy with that. I'd be really happy with that. But uh, it's not. Uh, so, but I'm, I like the way Killer sounds. I have no problem with the sound of Killer. It's still ferocious. Killer. And I don't think Iron Maiden's done anything as good since Killers. And of course, my favorite, the first Iron Maiden album. I think the production helps the songs. You know? As shitty as it may be. And yes, uh, Steve Harris thinks... It's a crappy sound, and that's his opinion. You know, I don't agree with him, but that's his opinion. I do agree with him when he says that he hates the song Ganglands and Invader off Number of the Beast. I totally agree with that. I remember hearing him say that, like, I don't know, eight or nine years after I heard uh, the, the album Number of the Beast. It was like eight years later when Steve Harris said that. I was like, holy shit. Those are the only two songs I really dislike on that album. And I have a lot of friends and a lot of friends here online that feel different. They love those songs. And that's cool. You know, you all probably agree with Steve Harris with the sound of the first album being shitty. Well, I agree with him when it comes to Ganglands and Invaders. That's how I feel. But anyway, yeah, it's all about the Anno and me. I don't have a problem with Number of the Beast other than those two songs. I love Peace of Mind, I love Power Slave, and after that they lost me, man. So, you know, I'm an early Maiden fan, and as much as I like those three Dickinson albums, I still don't think they even come close to the first two Maiden albums. And that, you know, the cool thing about the internet is that there's so many people out there on the internet that think just like me. They all hate, I mean, many are worse than me. They just hate Bruce Dickinson, period. I can handle those first three albums. I can handle Accident of Birth and Chemical Wedding are amazing albums that are better than anything Maiden has done after Power Slave, in my opinion. But, you know, he thinks the album sounds like shit. I don't. I'm cool with Bruce and Steve thinking that because that's their opinion, man. But a lot of people get upset. How dare you say my favorite Maiden album sounds like shit? You're Bruce Dickinson. You're not even in the fucking band. Shut your fucking mouth. But yet, you know, who screaming at Bruce Dickinson has just as valid his opinions as Bruce Dickinson does. That's how I roll. I really don't care how anybody feels as long as you're respectful. Because let's say if you say to me, you know, you're a dick because you don't like this. And yeah, you, you are a complete maiden twat and you're not even worth my time. It's like everybody out there, if you're going to argue with somebody's musical opinion, you're arguing for nothing because at the end of the day, that person is still going to feel that way musically and you didn't do jack shit. And I know your intention is to wake people up, to make them feel like, uh, oh, you got to think like me musically. I am a music expert. I've had little twats tell me this, man. People that are 16, 17 tell me that. Not that age matters, but it's hysterical. If some 16-year-old is going to tell this old fuck that's pushing 60, that's been buying fucking albums and being into metal since 78, going to tell me? What the hell's wrong with you, kid? Your parents suck. Yeah, that's what I think. Your parents suck. Anyway, what do you all think, man? Uh, you all fans of the first Maiden album? I know there's a lot out there that, that don't like the sound of the first Maiden album. And that's great. I respect your opinion like I respect that douchebag Dickinson's opinion. And Steve Harris. I got no problem with any opinions. It's all good, man. At the end of the day, I ain't going to change my mind. And don't you even try to change mine because you'll fail. Anyway. And I want to thank you all for watching The Only News That Matters. And please uh, subscribe to the video if you haven't. I would really appreciate that. And uh, smash that, uh, what is it called? Smash that uh, notification bell. Yeah, smash it like the kids say. That'd be awesome if you do that. Because everybody that subscribes to my channel is awesome. And hopefully you are subscribed as well. And if you already are subscribed, 
take a look at the video make sure you're still subscribed because some people are telling me they're getting unsubscribed for no reason and that's not cool and come back and subscribe again because you rule and like the video it's good for the youtube algorithms so stay frosty listen to black sabbath and smack them a gob farewell and adieu to you fair spanish ladies farewell and adieu you ladies of spain for we've received orders for to sail back to boston and so never more shall we see you again. <laughs>